All right, Paul, we're a little over 48 minutes away from the big game, the conclusion of the season. Uh, right now, story like that just if there's story is there something we're missing right now when it comes to breaking down this matchup between these two teams you know it's a really good matchup you know now I, I think the 49ers were the best team in football all year you know definitely the best team in the NFC once the Eagles crashed and burned um, I did not think the Chiefs were the best team you know they have the best quarterback they have the best player but I did I looked at the Chiefs and said they're not going to make the Super Bowl again I thought they would lose in Buffalo I thought they would lose in Baltimore no, and I'm not sure they weren't, I'm not sure they were the best teams, they're the best team in either of those games, but have the best quarterback. And so, um, look, some people have fatigue, I get it. The Chiefs, you know, if you're not a Chiefs fan, it's like really four, four times in five years, they're in the Super Bowl, that's boring. 49ers, I don't think are a completely lovable team. You know, they, they, this was the same matchup as four years ago. But this is, this is a, a big time matchup. And, you know, often in these games, you know, when you have two of the highest level quarterbacks, like if this was Josh Allen and, and um, well, it couldn't be Josh Allen and Mahomes, but, you know, in the playoffs, it was Josh Allen and Mahomes, Lamar Jackson and Mahomes. That's big time stuff. The Brock Purdy thing is a different wrinkle, and it'll be fascinating to see how that plays out on Sunday. Very interesting story. Yeah. When you talk about the Chiefs and, like, the adversity that they went through, I know this is, what, three and five years, but can you kind of, can you kind of compare them to, my Giants rookie, t my, my rookie year, 07 Super Bowl team in terms of the adversity, what they've had to go through in the season, and then going on a run towards the end of the year. Does that does this question make sense? You know what I mean? Well, in some ways, I mean, um, you know, Eli Manning in 2007 was not Patrick Mahomes 2024. You know, he was an ascending quarterback who, let's face it, was pretty good. And then, you know, that took him to the next level. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think the Chiefs, I didn't think they were good enough. You know, I mean, how many games did you watch the Chiefs play this year where you saw, now the defense is pretty good, where you watched them and said, has Patrick Mahomes and these receivers ever played together? Right? You know, look, Richie James, Kadarius Tony, guys we know from the Giants weren't doing great stuff. Um, you know, um, um, Valdez Scaling dropping, dropping the ball on national TV. Um, you know, they just weren't good enough. You know, Rasheed Rice was not what he is now. He was just a rookie trying to figure it out. Um, Kelsey was good as always, but he was not. I thought he had taken a step back. Now he's taken a big step back up in the playoffs. You know, he's great, obviously. But um, I just looked at them and said, they can't score enough. I mean, how many games did they play where they just didn't score in the second half of games, right? They just didn't score. But um, look, the quarterback is, the quarterback is, is I mean, he's, uh, you know, I'm not the only person that has to say that he's a great player, but the weird thing about him is he doesn't run like Lamar. You know, he doesn't throw with the beauty of like an Aaron Rodgers, but he just, he doesn't look like the greatest athlete, right? When he runs, somebody somebody said when he runs, when he scrambles, it almost looks like he's laughing. You know what I mean, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know giggling I mean? while yeah, he's laughing. Yeah, he's like, he's like, it doesn't look like he's going anywhere and he's tiptoeing the sideline and you're like, he's got 15 yards on the first down. So, um, he, he's a hard guy to bet against, even though I think the 49ers, you know, top 22 starters versus top 22 starters are the better team. I like to call Mahomes that genre of quarterback that's mobile enough. You know, he's not a oh, runner, like you mobile. said, not a, not a runner like Lamar, but he's not a pure pocket passer. He's a guy as a receiver. You love playing with guys like that. I would like no disrespect to a Lamar Jackson, but when he takes off and he gets out of that pocket, you're turning the block almost. Right. You know, I know he and Zay Flowers hooked up on that deep ball, but when you got a guy like a Aaron Rodgers or a Patrick Mahomes, when you see them take off, scramble drill automatically goes off in your head. And now this is where you know you can create, get some sort of big play and if you find the space. You know, and I wonder with you as a former receiver, I mean, the arm angles and things like that, I mean, you can look, and that's what's happening early in the season. Those guys look bad because, I mean, he can stick the ball into your face mask if you're not looking, right? You know, he this way, this way, you know, he shouldn't have made that throw what he did. And I, it'd be, you know, in the most of the season, that's what it looked like with them. And I said, you know, they just don't have enough firepower. You know, this is not Tariq Hill. This is not, you know, that, 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 that unbelievably potent offense. But, um, and hey, we got to talk about Steve Spagnuolo, you know, the Giant fans, because in other years, you looked at it and I thought, look, Spag's in a great spot. If he holds the team to 24, 27 points, they're probably going to win. Not anymore. Right, 17-10 in the playoffs, you know, I mean, not anymore. Um, Spags, you know, they're the second um, 
gave, it, gave up second fewest points in the league this year. They're a legitimate defense, and they need to be, or else they wouldn't be here. So, um, you know, he's he if he wins, he becomes the first coordinator in NFL history with four Super Bowl rings. Four. That is a lot. And um, look, it's coordinators in the Hall of Fame. That doesn't happen a lot, but. He is darn good. He is darn good. This defense is darn good. I mean, he's the reason why I think they may have a chance to win, uh, just because he is, you know, that's a lot of firepower, even though Brock Purdy is not that elite quarterback, but he's a point guard, you know what I mean? And you're a point guard. You can get a lot of assists if you got guys on the wings who can dunk, and nobody has the dunkers that the 49ers have. They got some real dunkers on that team. And Spags is doing it with the league's youngest defense. Yeah. That's to me is the most surprising thing that he can get the young guys ready each week and playing at such a, a high level. Uh, we kind of mentioned you know, Giants. We just saw Dory Jackson walk by. I saw Bobby Okereke earlier. You saw Saquon. Just if you got a chance to talk to any of those guys and just thoughts. I know you and uh, Emma Kate spoke yesterday, but just thoughts going into this offseason. Well, uh, yeah, I've seen some of the guys here. Some guys want to talk. Some guys don't want to talk. I know uh, Kayvon was here the other day. Um, you know, I talk to a lot of people here when I'm here that aren't the Giants, and a lot of people ask me, what the heck has happened with the Giants this year? You know what I mean? And, and, and there's a lot of talk about how it went down after the season with Dayball and with Wink and the perception that maybe, um, you know, there's some dysfunction there and that, you know, Dayball has – did not have a good second year, obviously. Um, so I think the Giants brand, you know, if we were sitting here talking last year, it was, you know, if it was a stock, you want to buy. It was a buy. You know, if, if this was last year, it would have been the day after Brian Dable was named Coach of the Year, right? Um, so um, the Giants have a lot of reputation mending to do. They really do. You know, and I don't think it's as much of um, it, it was as chaotic and mayhem as people are portraying it to be but sometimes that doesn't matter you know the perception and reality sometimes perception wins out so the perception is that Dable kind of lost control um, of, of, of some of his assistants and things now Wink is going on to be the defensive coordinator in Michigan he did not get a job in the NFL and um, now Michigan's a terrific job right but um, I don't think any long-time defensive coordinator wants to go back to college. So he did not get a job in the NFL. I think that surprised him. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that works out for him. We'll see. You know, Shane Bowen is a uh, interesting choice. The most experienced of all the guys that, that, that um, uh, Brian Dable um, interviewed. And he's 37. Wink is 60. So a lot younger. A lot younger situation here. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, you know, the players liked Wink. So we'll see how that 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 turns out so much to write about this offseason Paul so always, much always 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 Never a dull day La last year was a lot of upbeat stuff this year not as nearly as much well thanks for uh, hanging out with us sure. and uh, we'll see you uh, Super Bowl Sunday okay and what about um, uh, you have I can use your account at the craps table I don't gamble, man. I learned my lesson up at the Casino de Montreal in the ah, Canadian Football yeah. League. I lost, I, I lost a lot, right here, but that's all and, 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 different. And that was that was a thirty percent um, exchange rate too. I think, right? Exchange rate, taxes, yeah. all of it. I came home and was ready to live in Dad's basement, man. It was it was that bad. Good, good. That's another story for another day. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I will stay away from the cracks, table. It's okay. We got it.